Hey guys, today's challenge is going to be a little different than what I normally do. Today, I want to see if it's possible to beat the entirety of Resident Evil 2 Remake without running. Will I be able to outwalk Mr. X? Can I beat all of the bosses? Will I be able to survive the self-destruct countdown at the end? Well, that's what I intend to find out. Before we get started, let's go over the rules. For rule one, running is not allowed. The challenge itself is failed if we are required to touch the run button. And for rule two, I am setting the difficulty to standard as it's a pretty balanced difficulty. Now that that's out of the way, let's get right into it. We start right at the gas station where once we get inside, we have to slowly walk past the first zombie. We grab the keys and try to leave, but the zombie decides to give us a love tap on the way out. When we get to the door, we meet our favorite waifu, Claire Redfield, who decides to come with us on our adventure, so we immediately jump into a police car and make our way to Raccoon City. Once we arrive there, everything seems fine, until we get swarmed by a bunch of zombies. And as if things couldn't get any worse, a semi-truck is coming right at us with a lust for blood. With no time to dodge, we have to take the hit, and because of this, we end up getting separated from Claire and having to make our way to the police station all by ourselves. The walk to the police station is intense. Not only do we have a horde of zombies right behind us, but we also have to narrowly dodge zombies by walking as slow as a snail on Xanax. Once we make it to the police station, we open the shutter and make our way to the watchman's room where we need to help out a fellow police officer. We're able to save him in time, but there's no time to celebrate just yet as a zombie bursts through the door. We dupe the zombie into climbing over the desk and start walking back to the shutter while taking out any zombies in our way. We climb under the shutter, but it's too late, as the zombie already has us in its grasp. Right when we're about to turn into Manwich, the greatest man in the universe, Marvin Branagh, comes in and saves the day. After a short conversation, he gives us a knife, and we can finally explore the RPD on our own. The problem with not being able to run is that most zombies that we encounter usually need to be killed as it's impossible to dodge around them just by walking. The only enemies that were easy to dodge were the lickers. Well, except for the one guarding the yellow medallion. It aggros as soon as it spawns. I nearly died walking away from it, which was pretty scary. After collecting all the medallions though, we use them to unlock a secret entrance. We talk to Marvin and try to convince him to come with us, but it's too late. The infection is spreading too fast, and soon the ligma will turn him into a zombie. And because of this, we're forced to leave him behind. I won't let you down, Marvin. Now after some walking, we make our way to the first boss, G1 Birkin. Since we aren't cowards, we turn full British mode and use our knife to slash the ever-loving shit out of him. He managed to land a hit on us. But, because we were full of determination, we kept slashing until he couldn't handle it anymore. Now that Birkin's gone, we head up a ladder into a parking lot where we get to meet Ada Wong, the series' number one waifu. She kindly tells us to fuck off and walks away. We quickly walk after her into the cell block, but instead of finding Ada, we find Ben who instantly dies. Finally, Ada decides to show up, and I can't, can I just say, where the hell did she come from? There was not a single place here where she could have hid. Now that Ada is gone, we head into the tunnels of the parking garage where we kill a bunch of dogs and collect any items we find. Once we head into the RPD is where the real challenge begins. Once we clear the fire from the wrecked chopper, we get introduced to Mr. X, but before he sees us, we quickly head back outside and hide. When the coast is clear, we head to the room to collect the jack tool, which, by the way, has a liquor in the hallway outside. Something interesting is that you can actually move the liquor out of the hallway by aggroing it and quickly leaving. Once you ran to the hallway, the liquor is gone, which makes what happens next much easier.
When we reach the library, there isn't enough time to move the bookshelves, so instead we climb up the ladder and walk to the weak floorboards. When Mr. X gets close, we fall through and quickly move the shelves and reach the clock tower room before he can reach us. We collect the last electronic part and walk all the way back to the cell block where we collected the key card to the parking garage shutter. When we try to leave, all the cells open and zombies start flooding in. I tried to push through, but instead I just got double teamed by some zombies, but I kept going. And when Mr. X came in, I threw a flashbang and walked to the exit, but Mr. X decided to be an asshole and he got revenge by smacking me on the way out. Once Mr. X is taken care of, we now can head back up to the RPD to go and collect the Lightning Hawk, and once we collect it, we head back to the garage and open the shutter. We might want to open the shutter. Now we head into the sewers. Down in the sewers, we have to run away from a giant alligator. Well, kind of. We aren't pressing the run button, and even if we let go of the stick, Leon will still continue to run no matter what which makes this section out of our control. I personally wouldn't count this, but you can decide for me in the comments. Let me know what you think. Now we get to play as Ada. I got lucky and was able to take down any zombies that got in the way with criticals, but I did get bit by a zombie on the way to the lift, which put me in caution status, and because of this, walking for Mr. X was much more intense as having low health also lowers movement speed. But other than this, Ada's section was fine. Now that we're back as Leon, we head through the sewers where we encounter the first G adult. To get by, I just shot it, which made it pop up, and this actually lets you just walk by. Unfortunately, this is the only one that could get by this way. Every other one had to be killed. Once we reach the monitor room, we now have to get to Ada, but to do that, we need to collect three chess piece plugs first. Getting the plugs wasn't an issue, because I've just been crafting a whole lot of magnum out the whole time, so killing them was not an issue. Before we unlock the chess piece door, we first head back to the RPD so we can get the two parts for the lightning hawk and the secret stash of flamethrower ammo. Once we have what we need, we unlock the puzzle door and fight Burke in G2. To get through the first phase, we first stand in a very specific spot next to the shutter door, and wait till Birkin smashes it down. Now we have to slowly walk all the way to the next fight arena, but since we aren't fast enough, he just keeps hitting us over and over as we walk there. But we eventually reach the platform. Here, it was getting a little tough, as Birkin would just keep hitting me as soon as I got up. But with two flashbangs and the flamethrower, we're able to down him with one hit from the shipping container and send his punk ass into the abyss. Now that he's gone, we help Ada and head into the nest. Now that we're in the nest, we head to the cafeteria and the kitchen and start killing zombies and collecting items. We collect the upgrade chip which unlocks the door in the lobby, and now we can proceed to the main shaft. We head east, and here we are introduced to the Ivies. Just like the G adults, these guys can't be dodged around by walking, so every time I encountered one, I was forced to put them down. In the east wing, we fill the dispersal cartridge with a solution, make our way to the lounge where we get slapped around by liquors, and turn on the power so we can freeze the dispersal cartridge. Now we can get the level 3 upgrade chip, and once we grab it, Mr. X gets right in our way, so we have to down with the shotgun. We walk to the west wing and grab the G-Virus, and Birkin gets in our way. Birkin did think he had the upper hand here, and he, almost, and he did for a little while, as he started slapping me around as I couldn't dodge his attacks, but what he didn't know was that I had an ace up my sleeve. Since Birkin couldn't handle the power of our magnum and flamethrower, he ended up falling just like all the rest. After seeing Annette be sent to the Shadow Realm, we get to the main shaft where Ada falls into the abyss. But we don't have time to care about that. We need to escape before the laboratory self-destructs, and since we only have 9 minutes, we don't have time to fuck around. We head into the elevator and blast any Ivies or Mr. X's that get in our way. When we get to the lift and activate it, Mr. X shows up and he's stronger than ever. 
but I refuse to go down without a fight. And since I'm not a coward, I decided to fight him head on with my knife. So I kept slashing and slashing, but no matter how many times I did, his power level kept increasing. He was just too powerful. And just when it seemed like all was lost, a mysterious stranger dropped the Super Tyrant's only weakness, a badass quad barrel rocket launcher. Once we grab it, we blast him into oblivion. Now that he's dead, we get on the escape train and have finally escaped this nightmare. And there you have it. The challenge is finally over. This was a very interesting run. You can beat the entire game without running, and it's not even that hard if you don't count the forced alligator section in the sewers. Let me know in the comments if you think this was a failure or not. The only stressful part of the run was the timer at the end and walking away from Mr. X. He was right on us the whole time. It was so scary. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider liking and subscribing as it motivates me to make more videos like this one, and I will see you in the next video. Later. I can't believe I actually miss her.